Welcome back to Faces of Parkinson's. I'm Robert Cochran, your host, and today I'm with Steve Ford from Parkinson's UK. Steve, how are you today? Yeah, good, thank you. Well, it's very nice to meet you, and uh, I know as we spoke a little before the show, I told you uh, I know a fair amount about Parkinson's here in the United States, but really nothing internationally, and so I'm so glad to get the chance to talk to you. Tell me first about your personal connection to Parkinson's and, and why you're part of Parkinson's UK. Okay, so I joined Parkinson's UK 12 years ago now. Um, beforehand, I'd had a lot of experience of managing health services, including some man some experience of managing Parkinson's services. But actually, at the time, didn't know anybody um, living with Parkinson's. When I joined the charity, I, I applied for, for a job. It looked a great job. Um, but obviously, once you get um, involved in an organisation like this, I mean, actually, we have 40,000 members, people living with Parkinson's. You just get so involved. So so quickly and you know it's been a real privilege just to get to know and hear the stories of, of thousands of people living with Parkinson's. I guess it's like ironic that um, two or three years ago my father was diagnosed with, with Parkinson's as well so that it, it brings it all home actually when it, when it becomes part of your family as well. Yeah I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your father and obviously I empathize very deeply with that. Your, your journey, like you said, where you started off not being a part of it, uh, personally, not knowing anyone with it, to getting to where now, obviously it touches your family. Can you tell me some of those stories along the way that, that made you understand? Because from the outside, when people don't know what Parkinson's is, in the States, they think of Muhammad Ali and they think of Michael J. Fox. Uh, what do people in the UK think of when they think of Parkinson's if they don't know? Well, I think that's a really good, good question. And, and I suppose, you know, what we always come up against is this sense of it's a condition that affects older people and it's about a tremor. And, and I think, you know, when you talk to um, the, the community, you, you so quickly realise that it is so much more than that. You know, people talk about it impacting on every aspect of, of daily living. Um, a lot of the work we're doing here is around non-motor symptoms. You know, in, in many ways, people say that actually sometimes, you know, the treatments can be quite effective for some of the motor challenges with, with Parkinson's. It's, it's the other problems that, that cause, um, you know, those, those real kind of day-to-day -day challenges. And that's what we as a as a charity are trying to bring to life so you know pretty much every day i would say we have some kind of story some kind of profile in in, in the media where we're just trying to broaden that understanding of, of what parkinson's is all about and just allow people living with the condition to tell their story yeah so what are the kinds of things that you you bring to light on a daily basis are there are the individual profiles are they how, do, how does parkinson's uk serve your community Okay, well, there are three things that, that we're determined to do. We, we spent a lot of time, um, it was about four years ago now, where we, we asked everybody in the key, well, not everybody, but we asked as, as many people as we could, what three things would make the biggest difference in, in their lives? Um, and, and the community came back with, with a really strong message, and this is what we're completely focused on. So the first thing, people talked about better treatments and a cure in years, not decades. I think everybody told the story about how when they were diagnosed, the consultant said to them, well, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a cure, there'll be new treatments in, 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 in five years. And people say, well, I heard that 15 years ago and, and you know, I'm still on the same um, drug. I'm still on, on, on levodopa. So a real challenge for us. How can we work with others, work with partners to really accelerate that, that process of, of developing new drugs and treatments? The second thing that people talk about is, is wanting quality services as a standard. Obviously, in the, in the UK, we have the, the National Health Service, the NHS. And, and one of the questions was, how do we make sure that everybody, you know, wherever they live in the, health, uh, in the UK, is getting access to good quality care? And we've been um, really focusing hard on, on, on that. And the third thing that people said to us was... Um, yeah, I want you to help me to take control, live life to the full in a society that understands Parkinson's. So we've, we've always been very good, I think, at providing lots of information about Parkinson's, you know, websites, local advisors, um, helplines and, and the like. But I think this has been much more about bringing 
um, the whole experience of, of the community, those people who have been expert at living with Parkinson's for such a long time, how do we make sure that their um, strategies, their messages, their philosophy is, is, is really kind of shared widely? So we're doing lots around self-management programs and exercise programs and, and peer support type sessions just to bring that, that experience to, to play for everyone.